I will call to order this meeting of the Mosquito, what the heck is our name? Mosquito opt-out committee. <laughs> I am just subbing today. Um, and um, so uh, I don't, I guess this is funny because I'm used to in the conservation commission, somebody doing it that's not a member of the committee. So Tony Limarelli is here. Um, Bobby Kamen, I don't really, I just realized it came in. Bobby came in. You have to say present, I think. Um, and you might have to say it out loud. We've had things in the past where, sorry. <laughs> Everyone mean, should put in present. Bobby came in present. Great. <laughs> Michelle Morris Friedman. Present. Michelle. Excellent. Okay. So we have officially have a quorum and we can start the meeting. That was an important thing to do. Um, and we have two other people attending too right now, too. Yeah, we will recognize yeah. them when we get to that part on the agenda. Okay. Um, I mean, Jane is in and out. She's yeah, I'm actually signing out and then signing in on a different account. So yeah, bye. That's oh. okay. Um, okay, so I would, um, well, you know what? I can, oh, I can't do the chat either. Okay, so we don't have any control in this meeting, unfortunately. Um, but I can say that the next um, item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes. Um, so I'll turn that over to our, uh, who was, I guess our, I don't know, was it Shal or Michelle that was our acting secretary last time? <laughs> I was acting secretary and I totally fell down on the minutes. I thought I sent them out. Then I thought I sent them out again and didn't get everybody in the BCC. And then realized just now, Tony, because I took the minutes on one device, I sent out minutes that haven't been amended. I went to my um, laptop right before the meeting and realized the amendments were on that copy. So- um, No problem. I, I so let's know. just delay that until next time. Um, yeah. But I think that one of the issues was, Bobby, I don't know if Michelle has, the updated, although you did send that around, I think. You, um, you sent a lot of things, but I didn't know what you meant by schedule. Um, so the strategic plan, I'm sorry. The should, strategic uh, plan. So I was confused by that. Okay, but Bobby also sent that out to all of us, I thought. Right, so I think it needs to be amended to the minutes uh, because that's something that's discussed in the minutes. So they can't be like, they would, okay. so when you send it around, Michelle, it has to have that document from Bobby um, is there, and the rules and regulations as well. So like those okay. two things. Should I do it as an attachment to my- You could do it, I yeah, you could it do it all in PDF is probably the easiest way, or okay. you could, they're all in Word doc. So you could probably just copy at the bottom of your- your minutes. Oh, okay, I will try to do that. I apologize. My also the only device I have word on is a 12 year old laptop. <laughs> and I don't have it on my desktop. And that's why I'm doing all this jiggling. I can if I can you do send me I think we're okay. If there's two of us, that's not a quorum. If you email me, Michelle, um, the the updated minutes, I can put that together and send it back to you. And then you can send it to everyone. Yeah, and, and I can, you know, I can do a lot on this. I just can't get into a Google yeah, Drive. No, it's fine. It won't take so, me like a minute. So there's no point. Okay, in. great. We'll play to our strengths. <laughs> and I'm seriously thinking of getting a new laptop anyway. I'm not going to pay supply chain issues. I'm not going to talk to anyone into buying anything in January 2022. <laughs> um, okay, so we will defer that for uh, until next time. Um, I make a motion that we uh, defer the minutes uh, uh, till our next meeting. Awesome. Michelle, you want to okay, second thank, that? I don't know. Can I second Yes, that? I second it. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, everyone in favor? Oh, uh, aye. Okay. okay. Good. Oh, any nays? Anybody abstaining? Okay. <laughs> this is only with three people. Bye. This is my first time to practice doing it right. So, all right. So the next item on our agenda, Chris will be happy to know, is new business. Um, so we are here because um, Chris Craig from the Pioneer Valley Mosquito Control District was able to join us tonight. And um, 
Welcome, Chris. We are happy to have you here. Um, thanks for making the time. Yeah, sure. You know, thanks for having me. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, I'm here to answer questions and kind of talk a little bit about our district. And, uh, you know, I sent that presentation, you know, it's a good visual aid, but uh, I'm happy to, you know, talk it over. So, you know, we're the new kids on the block. Uh, Pioneer Valley was the only area in Massachusetts that didn't have access to a mosquito district until 2017. Um, so we're the first district in 40 years to kind of be formed. Um, these past few years, we've been working on building up our, uh, our capacity to include new members in the Valley. Um, you know, when we started, we started with five or six founding members. And, you know, today, three years later, we're at 22 members. So, and we have, you know, interest from many more. So, you know, the, the demand has been very high and, you know, we're excited that we were able to get this thing off the ground. Um, you know, we're still working to meet some important milestones. Uh, primarily, we're working to get our first, uh, you know, standalone headquarters, which, you know, I'm happy to share. It looks like we'll be getting it next winter. So going into next summer, it looks like we're going to start to be able to offer a lot more services. But uh, you Chris, know, I'm just going to have you pause for just a second. Sure. Um, Bobby, are you taking notes? I am. Okay. Yes. Um, I vote to have Bobby act as clerk um, for this meeting. <laughs> um, Michelle, you want to second that? Yeah, second. I meant move, not vote. Um, all in favor? Vote? Move. Aye. Yes. Aye. Okay, no nays because that was three. Okay, all right. Go ahead, Chris. Sorry, I just wanted. I saw Bobby. Yeah, no doing worries. I thought she was taking notes, but I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> yeah, you know the the point I was getting at was. We've, we're really happy this uh, this project is getting off the ground because we've seen in these past few years that mosquito-borne diseases are uh, are basically uh, out of control. <laughs> and, uh, you know, in 2018, we saw a record West Nile outbreak throughout Massachusetts. It was the highest number of West Nile positive mosquitoes as well as West Nile positive human cases throughout the state. And then in 2019, we was followed up with the worst triple E year on record and you know you know the year after that in 2020 the triple e situation sort of fizzled out but then we started back into 2021 with yet another west nile virus outbreak so you know it's 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 looking like and you know with climate change making winters milder and you know the warmer seasons more uh i guess hospitable to mosquitoes it seems like uh mosquito borne disease is here to stay so you know, I, we're represented by uh, our commission is, we have commissioners from West Springfield, Northampton, um, formerly FERCOG, he moved on, but he's still in the commission, and uh, Deerfield. And they're all, you know, health agents in their respective cities. And, you know, they've been working for the past 10 years to make this project a reality because the Pioneer Valley has been uh, facing a kind of lack of uh, surveillance and actual mosquito control because, like I had mentioned earlier, this was just the only part of the state that didn't have access to one of these state districts. So that's what we've been doing. Um, you know, these past couple of years, since Hadley's been a member, we've been uh, providing surveillance to all of our members. So as I mentioned, we have 22 members and uh, each summer, everybody gets the same service. Everybody pays the flat rate of $5,000 per fiscal year. And for that fee, uh, I myself go around to each of our client towns and I set two types of mosquito traps each week. I collect those mosquito traps. I collect the mosquitoes. They get frozen and they get tested at the Department of Public Health lab. So I know this summer you guys had a West Nile positive in Hadley. Um, that was our catch in July. Um, so that's basically how the procedure works. So now that you have had it happen, um, once Department of Public Health tests it, you get notified immediately if there's a positive. So that's kind of the backbone of our district. You know, this is something we can, we were able to get started right away while we're growing. And, uh, you know, we just kind of want to start to get an, eye, an idea of what's happening in the Pioneer Valley because surveillance has been lacking up until, you know, we really got started. So that's what we do right now. We act as a surveillance uh, kind of entity, you know, to kind of monitor what diseases are doing in our local areas. 
uh, going beyond surveillance, once we have our facility next winter, we're going to start offering additional mosquito control services. Um, I should say all these services are going to end up being optional. Uh, the way it's, it works financially is towns are going to be able to opt in or opt out to what they want to use. Um, that way, no one, no community has to, you know, have a uh, take all approach. So you don't have to commit to using aerial pesticide or adult spray or even larval pesticide. It kind of what fits for your community is what you can pay to do. So sure, what's up? Do you want to take questions as you're speaking or at the end? Uh, Whichever is easier. You know, if, you, if it's easier to remember right away, I'm happy to answer them right now. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I caught it right. Did you say starting next winter, there, there'll be options? When is that going to start, the options? It's, the options will start next spring. We're getting our facility in the winter. And from then, we're going to be able to start offering them for the spring. So that's 2023 or 2022? 2023. Okay. So but yeah. until then, you're still doing the surveillance. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. So... Yeah, um, once we get kind of closer to, uh, you know, receive, getting into that facility, because the most important thing about getting the facility is the ability to pour, uh, store pesticides safely. And um, once we can do that, we can start to offer these additional services. So with that, you know, once we get closer, we'll start to be able to provide our members with pricing. You know, it's going to be a lot cheaper than going with a private contractor because, our whole thing is to be able to provide the public option that every other town in Massachusetts has had the option to, you know, enjoy. So we, we went with the approach of the like a la carte funding method. So towns could pick, you know, what services fit for them because, you know, we kind of recognize that not every community wants to, you know, spray their entire town. It's so that's been something my commissioners and I have been have felt strongly about. So we're always going to recommend the best practices to control mosquitoes, especially within an outbreak. But, uh, you know, we leave the decision making up to the town so they can do what's going to be most comfortable for everybody. So. So so in terms of um, two, two questions, if I may, from what you said, sure. um, I wrote the question down. Uh, actually, three. You said that there was cases that there was West Nile and uh, let's see, West Nile was found in Hadley. You mean the mosquito was, but there weren't any human cases. Is That's that right. right. Were there, it was just a mosquito West Nile right. infection. It was a West Nile positive mosquito in July or August. I'll have to double check the date, but there was no confirmed human cases. And were there any other in the in the district, or was it just Hadley? Yes, yeah, so there were, we had West Nile basically pretty well spread out through the entire Pioneer Valley. It was, West Nile is typically more concentrated in urban areas, but it, it's still not completely uncommon in more, you know, suburban and rural areas. The most, most of the West Nile in 2021 was detected in the Springfield metro area. But, you know, we saw some West Nile in South Hadley, Hadley, believe one in Northampton. And uh, even in some up in Franklin County, up in like Leiden. So it was, it was pretty well dispersed, but mainly concentrated around Springfield. Where do you do your surveillance in Hadley or is that secret? <laughs> it's, uh, I, I can share with you. Um, you know, I, I can't share Department of Public Health sites because if they pick them, it's you know, confidential yeah. to them. But or I'm able to share where we pick. I, I try to choose um, wooded and wetland areas. With woodland areas, it's like, it's typically pretty easy, but wetland areas can be a little harder to access. But, you know, with Hadley being very agricultural, you know, it can be a little bit piecemeal trying to find good spots. But, you know, I set traps around, you know, the Mount uh, Warner Conservation Area, uh, down by Reservoir Road, uh, along Bay Road in the south side of town. Um, on Venture Way off of what, I forget what the name of that street, Maple Street, is it? But mm -hmm. it's near uh, Route 9, Russell Street, but it's got a lot of wetlands around those uh, industrial and uh, commercial areas. So I set a lot of traps there. And then down Route 9 a little ways around Wastegate Center, because it's the same thing. There's just tons of uh, reeded wetlands around those commercial properties. So that's where I look out from. 
because I have two types of traps. I have a trap that's good for wetlands and then I have a trap that's really good for woodlands. So I try to make it a mix to get a good like geographic spread of mosquitoes. So I'm kind of looking at every part of town. Okay. Um, I, I'm sorry, does anyone help me have questions? Cause I have some more. Um, I have a question about the methods, but if you want to ask something else instead, Bobby, I can. Um, well, it was in reference to, um, I've lost my train of thought. Go ahead, ask it. Go ahead. Okay, Connie. so since if anyone's watching this uh, from the public on the recording, um, since we don't have, you're not able to share your slides, can you talk about the, the services that you'll be offering? The looks like three to four services, the larva sighting and the adult sighting. Sure. So the next service we're gonna we're planning to start to offer will be the larval mosquito control which is larva siding and that comes in two forms there's a catch basin larva siding which is the treatment of storm drains with uh, bti to prevent emergence of mosquitoes and the uh the goal of that is to prevent west nile cases because the mosquito that carries west nile virus uh tends to pre prefer containers in urban areas so Storm drains is a big breeding area for that kind of mosquito. So that's a very common treatment in a lot of member towns in other mosquito districts. So, you know, that's one we're trying to get started as quickly as we can. And then the other type of larval control is larval control in a more uh, natural wetlands. And that's the same thing, applying a BTI typically over a larger uh, geographical area to prevent mosquitoes from emerging uh, you know, as the summer comes up. Typically with uh, these larvicide treatments, you tend to do one in like spring to prevent that emergence. And then you do like one in the summer, depending on how much BTI you use or what, uh, what day of treatment you do it to prevent like a second emergence in the summer. And uh, what's, what's good about larviciding is the pesticide used in that is uh, a lot more minimal risk than the adult spray. It uses a bacteria to kill the mosquito yeah. larvae, you know, while they're at that young stage. And uh, it tends to be a pretty popular method of control with towns and mosquito districts. So it's an important tool. We, we, we practice integrated mosquito management. So the most effective way to control mosquitoes is to hit them from different uh, with different facets of a control to best control them and also reduce reliance on pesticides. So that's an important tool in the toolbox. And then beyond uh, larval control, we have uh, water maintenance, which is more of a uh, pesticide free, but like a physical control of mosquitoes. That involves, uh, you know, cleaning up ditches and wetlands to allow water to flow more freely and uh, kind of reduce the amount of habitat that's suitable for mosquitoes to lay their eggs in as well as, you know, breed and whatnot. And uh, that could, that goes anything from clearing storm drains to clearing culverts, clearing uh, just ditches, uh, kind of restoring natural waterways that may be blocked. You could even get, uh, you know, these devices that allow water to flow through beaver dams to prevent the pooling of water. So that's uh, those are projects that happen typically in mosquito districts in the winter, spring. And uh, it's a good way of kind of preparing for the warmer season to prevent that larger number of mosquito population from getting out there as adults. And then- You actually did this, go, go ahead, finish, finish. <laughs> and the last one was the, the adult spraying, which is kind of like the, not last resort, but it's like that is when you can no longer prevent a number of mosquitoes from emerging. You might consider adult spraying to control mosquitoes you know, with that uh, adult pesticide, you know, from a truck sprayer or a backpack sprayer in uh, any particular hotspot. We, we kind of recognize, you know, most of our towns are very, uh, conservative with their, you know, desire to use that uh, adult pesticide. So we leave that option open to the community when that service becomes available. So we kind of uh, would expect to use it in the case of an outbreak in a local scale. Um, so we're, the option's gonna be open to use adult pesticide. But uh, like I said, we kind of leave that option on the town and that, you know, option will be there. 
So, yeah. so the only, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead, Bobby, you finish and then I'll finish. I had a very particular okay. question. Okay, um, so it's out, it, so the only service right now um, to the towns in Pioneer Valley is the um, surveillance, is that right? That's correct. And anything additional is not gonna be available until the spring of 2023, is that correct? That's right. And are you doing anything on the edu uh, educational level at this point or is it all, who, who do you communicate? Sure, with in the, I, in the educational level, you know, we're always able to provide materials or even talks on requests. So, you know, if there's any sort of, you know, health event or any meetings, you know, I, I'm the, the coordinator. So I typically handle the educational side of things. So those are all available upon request. I'm happy to provide any literature or any like, or make it to meetings, basically at request. Um, I, I'm just wondering if you ever survey um, tire piles um, because they have right. a lot of standing water and in my yard, it seems to be the main source of mosquitoes right. because we're right next to one. Tires is a hot one. So we definitely want to introduce a tire recycling program when we have our facility, because you know, that is, you're totally right. That is a huge, uh, that's a huge uh, kind of breeding spot for the urban mosquito that's gonna carry West Nile virus. So, well, we, you know, we always uh, yeah, kind of encourage anyone that might have tires to try to, you know, drain them. Um, we do want a tire recycling program because, you know, our sister districts do offer that. So that's certainly something we're looking into. Um, I know we have a tire recycling plant in Eastern Mass. I don't know if there's any in Western Mass yet, but that's something we've definitely talked about exploring. So we'd have to come up, you know, with the pricing scheme because it would probably have to be a flat rate to be in the service, but I can't imagine it would be too high because, you know, I think it's a few dollars a tire or something. Well, but, one, can I just comment on issues? Sure. Um, we had a talk about tire recycling and have there are some towns doing it low cost, but mm -hmm. if it's five or ten dollars a tire and people have sizable numbers of tires, right. dozens or hundreds, it becomes a huge expense. Right. So anyway, if we can team up, if towns or a whole region can team up together and work mm -hmm. out a deal, that would be really helpful. Right. You know, that's mm -hmm. I think that would totally be uh in, in our wheelhouse that we'd be interested in looking at because, you know, we, there are mosquito districts that do offer that service. So that's something we're certainly interested in. But yeah, if we can make it cost effective for our members, you know, that would be great. I think the biggest, we would probably, the big, one of the biggest obstacles would be finding sizable transportation for large amounts of tires, but we can definitely look into that for the future. Are you Thanks, offering? Chris. Go ahead, Bobby. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Too many questions. Um, are you doing any, any education in terms of mitigation besides standing water, such as even down to the personal level in terms of? Right. of uh, yeah. Do you yeah, have any educational so, materials? Go ahead. Yeah, I, I tend to, when boards of health ask before, I tend to provide literature mainly stressing personal uh, kind of precautions. Um, it's the, uh, it's an effective way, you know, at preventing your chance of contracting mosquito-borne disease. But same thing, like upon request, I'm happy to provide literature in that wheelhouse. But, uh, you know, as we've grown, we haven't really participated in any like health fairs or anything, but, you know, boards of health that are requested that information, I've been, you know, happy to provide. Are you using the information that's on the Department of Health um, website or do you have your own publications? It would be the same. You, we, the state. we provide the same information, yeah. Okay, Okay. just just an FYI for the committee. If you go on the Department of Health state website, there are some educational materials uh, that we can order. Just, just, I'll make a note of that. Okay. So and I, um, I do have another I'm trying to understand sort of what is uh, your baseline for thinking mm -hmm. about high numbers and also the risk. So, I mean, you're talking to public health and you're 
um, your, your business is being worried about mosquitoes. I'm an ecologist. I think about the ecosystem and I sure. look at your number that the highest 2018 was our biggest West Nile virus outbreak record breaking year. And we had two cases in Hampshire County and mm -hmm. maybe, you know, having been through two years of pandemic has, has dulled my, um, sense of those numbers or it's just thinking, but because there's also risks that. of putting poison in the water that we don't, you know, um, For sure. think about in the same numbers. So I guess I want to understand what are other towns doing? What is the like threshold to say, okay, yeah, we should do larvicide or are they actually doing that every year? Many towns do larvicide every year just to control that number every year. Um, in the Pioneer Valley, Larvicide tends to be popular, but you know the adult spray tends to be less of a popular control method, which is why we kind of leave the decision up to our members. Um, they can it can get to the point which I'm sure you everybody knows with the aerial spraying uh, opt out, where Department of Public Health steps in, and they'll consider an aerial spray. Um, so, you know, at the lower no outbreak, mild, moderate outbreak, where it would be, you know, in our wheelhouse to, you know, offer that service to anyone that wants it, that'll be there. But if it goes beyond that, where there's a severe outbreak over a large geographic area, that's when Department of Public Health is going to say, hey, um, we're considering an aerial spray. And, uh, and you know, do you have numbers for what is considered mild versus severe? Their scale is based on what they're detect or between what we are uh, collecting and what they're getting from uh, like medical data. So if they're detecting a animal or human case and we're collecting mosquitoes that are positive in either disease, they're going to determine a hey, this town, this came from this town. It's most likely, you know, in this area, and then they give you a rating on that risk level. So they kind of make that decision based on what the surveillance and what the medical data is showing. Chris, are there any towns um, in, in the district that have, I think Northampton was approved for an opt-out. Are there any other towns mm -hmm. in the district that have approved for opt-out for the municipal spring? I would have to mm -hmm. look, there was a good number of towns. I would say most that opted out did receive approval for opt-out because they were considered low risk. On the other hand, there were a lot of towns that did apply for opt-out that didn't get it up in the area around uh, like Orange, New Salem, Shutesbury, Leverett. And that was because the year previous, there were Tripoli mosquitoes being detected. So they were considered at a higher risk. So Department of Public Health was less uh, lenient with them and they didn't want them to opt out in case you know those mosquitoes emerged again. There's a large swamp system up in that area of the Pioneer Valley. So when Triple E breaks out and it comes to the valley, it tends to start there first. But so we had heard about some people that got denied, and you're saying mm -hmm. it might not have been the way they wrote their application. It might have been actually just from the beginning, they were never going to get passed. No, it, yeah, DPH was probably going to be harder on them or wanted to see a very robust plan as an alternative mm -hmm. to approve them. And do you have a sense of where Hadley falls in that? I would consider them lower risk because, you know, a trip, they will take Triple E more seriously than West Nile virus because West Nile is still serious. Triple E tends to be much more fatal in human cases. And uh, it tends to be less, uh, you know, it's a little more uncommon than West Nile virus. So when Triple E outbreaks, that tends to be more on their radar. So if Hadley has had history of triple E, they would be much less likely to approve an opt-out unless the alternate plan was super robust. Um, and as far as you know, we don't have a history of triple E. No. Okay, but okay that's good to hear. I, sh I should add though, surveillance has been spotty up until you know we really got started. So I wouldn't say it's never been there. Um, you know, I know there's been confirmed triple E in nearby and at least Belcher town, but uh, not that I know for Hadley. And Bobby, um, do we have that Northampton report that's successful? I have not heard back from her. I expect that um, 
Michelle, I expect that she's very involved in COVID stuff. I've not heard back from her. I've reached out a couple of times for a plan. But in the meantime, I actually, on the NOFA, NOF, uh, Organic Farmers Association, um, they are supposed to send me a list. They have the whole list of uh, the towns in the state that were approved. So I'm waiting for that list. But I do not have any copies of other towns at this time. Uh, I have another question for you, Chris. Um, so sure. I'm a little confused. You work through DOH, but I thought the mosquito control was through MDAR. It so is. I'm just trying to understand. So it is a little weird. We're like, we're like partners. We kind of work hand in hand. You know, we're part of agriculture, but Department of Public Health, uh, they test our mosquitoes. They, uh, you know, they can kind of, you know, go above us if the mosquito situation becomes more statewide because you know at the end of the day uh, these districts are a little more localized so when it calls for a statewide uh, response department of public health can make some calls when it comes to mosquito control but you know we work well together with them so we're okay. with separate agencies but we kind of work in the same goal but the department of health are the ones that make the determination in terms of spring is that right with the aerial spraying, yes, we can. Make, and can go ahead. We can make determinations for spraying in our members if, but if they want it, it's a matter of, you know, we don't have an incentive to spray unless the town asks us to, because obviously the town will have to pay for the project. So we offer it, you know, on a more localized scale. And Chris, um, just because we haven't gotten a plan in front of us, and you've mm -hmm. probably seen them, we know that uh, they ask for like, uh, what's your alternative? What are you going to do? And right. so do some of these say, if we, through the surveillance from our mosquito control district, district staff comes up that there's positives, we will institute a larvicide or something like, what is, what do right. these plans look like? So that's where it begets, you know, not tricky, but it's like they look at towns through a different lens. So we had plenty of our members come and say, hey, can we say we're in the district and opt out? I go, well, I mean, we don't make the decision, but you're of course welcome to say, hey, you're, we're a part of the district. We have surveillance, we have access to, you know, to education. It's frustrating because we obviously don't yet offer the additional services, which you know, in the future in opt outs, you'll be able to say, hey, we plan on doing this, this and that with the PM, the PVMCD. Um, and that's where it depends on the town. You know, some towns are going to say, hey, we're in the district, we have surveillance. They're going to say, hey, that's fine. That's enough. But if you're a town that's at high risk, they're not going to say that's enough. And, you know, that's where it becomes tricky because maybe they would have accepted uh, a plan if they're like, OK, we're going to contract XYZ company to spray. We're going to do this larval project here, but then they have to pay for it. And it's not, that's, you know, that's a lot for, you know, a small rural town. So it just ends up being an application they're going to deny because they have triple E history and they don't have the means to, you know, take care of it themselves sort of. Okay. That's great. So are you suggesting that if we, we propose Sounds like it's easy. We can say starting in spring 23, we will do this and this if, if we end up with um, surpassing some threshold through the surveillance. Um, sure. But for the nine months until then, um, and really it's not nine months, right? Because it's really just 22 because this doesn't really happen in winter. So it's right. really from May. I think we're going to vote on this in May. So it's really right. from May to September. Um, we could say that... Uh, we will use surveillance mm -hmm. and you're saying we don't even have to say necessarily if we're a low risk um, town, we don't even necessarily have to say that we will contract with such and such when this happens. Right. We could just say we're going to use surveillance and then starting right. in 23, we'll be, we'll be. Right. With, with their history, like you said, if, if you had a history of Tripoli, they would be much more strict with you. But I think right. that, you know, if, if your goal is to opt out, you know, if you said, you know, we're part of the district, we use their surveillance, we have access to their educational materials and their advocacy. And, you know, you could, ev you could even say, you know, we don't have much of a history of Tripoli. They'll probably approve it. You know, it didn't look like they were too strict last year. 
And I really think within the context of, you know, there's the triple E outbreak has seemed pretty much resolved. I think they will be not so strict about it. So, okay. They and are I'll, I'll just say that I misspoke. We're not actually voting on this. I keep getting that turned around. Um, oh, okay. Uh, go ahead, Michelle. I just have a question. Hadley's been very conscientious for the past couple of years about clearing culverts and ditches. I think there's been a sure. very determined effort. So citing that kind of thing or attaching a DPW plan, mm -hmm. if we can get it from them, would that help strengthen our application? Sure, it could. Yeah, you know, we, we don't, I mean, we wouldn't be able to do it in 2022, but, you know, for the 2023, if that's something Hadley's, you know, we're interested in doing this with the district, you know, that's totally something you can use. Um, but yeah. Love, by the way, having been on the Conservation Commission for four years and, and that being a bit of my day job, I love it that you're offering that as an option. That's great. Right, yeah. Yeah, it's a great way to, you know, control the populations without having to use chemical. Um, all and the, like you said, have other benefits to for Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. It tends to be, you know, beneficial for habitat. So that's something we're excited to do, you know, once we get that program started, when we get our new facility. Where is the facility going to be? Just curious. Do you um, know? We have a general idea of an area where we want it to be. Um, you know, it's going to go out to bid and, you know, the state, uh, the uh, real estate department will take care of it. But we're shooting to have it ideally at the geographic center. We want to be in year 91, you know, mm -hmm. you know, like East Hampton, North Hampton around 91. Um, even if it's like a little further south, like Holyoke, West Springfield, just being on 91 will be really helpful because then we can get up the valley really quickly. In addition, you know, being close to the mass bike too will be beneficial because, you know, we have members on the other side of the district there and like Palmer, uh, Ware's interested in joining. So we're shooting to just be along, you know, one of the major highways so we get from point A to point B as fast as possible. So the $5,000 that the town pays, and I'm hoping they're up to speed on that, uh, right now pays for surveillance. Do you, and there's going to be a menu of other mm -hmm. options in 2023. Do you know when that is it going to be a, um, a fee schedule and when will that be available? Because I'm thinking town funding, if we ever want to go that route, is going to need mm -hmm. to be approved in advance. Right. Yeah. So that's something we're probably going to work on leading up to that. I would imagine it will be next fall. We'll come out with it. And uh, the price will be assessed based on the scale of the job. So, you know, there's going to be the direct costs, like the pesticide cost, the fuel and, you know, the estimated hours for labor so that's pretty much what the job is going to consist of because you know we're not for profit so it's just a matter of you know meeting those direct costs so the costs are basically going to be pesticide or lavicide costs is that right yeah the pesticides the labor the fuel and then you know there'll probably be some overhead fee that's going to be determined but the machinery if you're doing all the culvert work and everything yeah right exactly if or we have any work. excavator mm -hmm. or anything um, but yeah, uh, speaking of the culvert work, I should add that um, the mosquito districts kind of have some exemptions for some, you know, uh, like wetland laws and stuff. So the work can be done with pretty uh, minimal, you know, approval and stuff. On top of that, the mosquito districts are able to work on private property. So that's an option for, you know, that's going to exist. One other thing I remember from, I don't have the application in front of me. I think Bobby, you brought it, I printed out last time to I our got meeting. It. Yeah, um, but it talked about kind of education piece. Sure. And was that, I, was, I, I don't know if I was, or we were trying to understand, is that the education about what we're gonna do to substitute for the opt-out plan or is it education as part of what we're gonna do as substituting for aerial spray? <laughs> Right. It's, it's more like education of kind of just keeping people informed on uh, just kind of the situation, uh, how to protect themselves and, you know, just mosquitoes in general, you know, kind of their tendencies and whatnot. So that's kind of how I've viewed the education portion of it is, uh, you know, disseminating information to, you know, people in our member communities. So it's more prevention and mitigation as opposed to we're doing right. this and get ready because we're going to do spray. I mean, it's it's right. how to prevent it 
before it's a problem, right? Right, exactly. Sort of personal, personal things you can do, and okay. For sure. Yeah, you know, we weren't not... sure if the option B was like, we as a committee have to, um, what our plan <laughs> is. So we have, if it was education about our, our plan is or education to like, stop the, well, it's, have it's fewer more, mosquitoes. Exactly, it's more education on, you know, protecting themselves, but. You know, in the case, though, I will say in like the case of towns that do spray and stuff, you know, boards of health typically do notify. And so as well as the district will notify what's happening and stuff on the other side of the spectrum there. But um, yeah, education is more like, you know, just kind of keep people informed on how to protect. Right, like talking to people about waiting dawn and dusk and like wearing long sleeves. Right. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Um, okay. 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 Let's uh, see. Other questions, Bobby? I think I let me quickly see. Uh, keep going. Talk amongst yourselves, as I say. I'm looking at my question. <laughs> if I can. Um, oh, I just wondered. Do you have you worked at all in conjunction with like Fish and Wildlife in in the town, or what other organizations have you worked with locally? Is it just statewide that you're connected to? Not so much fish and wildlife. We've made we mostly just work with Department of Public Health and our you know MDAR affiliates. But it's more so us as a district. It's more so us kind of bridging, um, you know, the local boards of health with uh, MDAR and Department of Public Health. You know, because you know me, I kind of work as uh, I'm. I live local. I kind of work more local. You know. I'm kind of, I guess, the ambassador for this district. So I, I would say I work more so with the local stakeholders than the state stakeholders. Do you see an opportunity for a town to work with something like work with a university or work with businesses or work with fish and wildlife? Are other towns doing that at all? Or do you know? We, I, I'm not sure. I can't speak for towns. I do know we, we're definitely interested in hiring students from UMass when the time comes to hire staff, because, you know, I think, I mean, we're going to provide some good summer jobs for, you know, students that are interested in entomology and plant science. So there's great professors at UMass that, you know, are a great educational resource to me personally. And uh, yeah, we're definitely looking forward to using the school. I mean, we, as a state district, we can't, there's like rules about interns and, you know, like volunteering and stuff. So they actually have to be employees. But they're gonna. There's gonna be seasonal jobs that are gonna be open for students in the in the valley. Okay, I'm familiar with the only person I know at UMass, and I'm it's just because I've just looked around. There's is Dr. Rich, but who have you yep. worked with at UMass? Dr. Rich, you know, I I read his material, and he's uh he's very active on the Mosquito Task Force, um, right. the first century Mosquito Task Force. So he's brilliant in in the other side of things in the realm of ticks. He's very good. Uh, with uh, you know that sort of project, so yeah, he he's a good resource. I actually contacted him, and he informed me, and he put me on to somebody else. He informed me that because of uh, public meeting laws and some of the requirements right. about sharing information, he couldn't work with us, and I was a little concerned about that. But, um, yeah, that's so, probably because he's on the task force. Yeah, yeah. Um, what? Yeah. Are you working with the task force at all? I mean, do you have any connections we, there? We have representatives on the task force. Um, one of the superintendents of uh, one of the districts is on the task force, uh, Priscilla Mann. She represents Bristol County Mosquito. And yeah. as well as MDAR, MDAR's commissioner, John LeBeau, is also on the task force. So the task force has been interesting. Um, we're definitely interested to see what happens because, you know, we're kind of hoping with the task force that there might be some uh, improvements on, you know, the funding for mosquito districts that will help local communities. Because the way, you know, the funding set up with mass law is we kind of believe it puts too much in the lap of, you know, the town. So we're hoping, you know, there'll be more state support after the task force, if, you know, because the, their goal is to make recommendations to the legislature saying, oh, this is how we believe mosquito control can be improved in the state. We're hoping there's, you know, there will be some improvements for, you know, state support to local communities because, you know, we have members in the district that are super, uh, you know, 
mosquito conscious, but you know, they can struggle to afford, you know, uh, mosquito services. And, you know, that's the thing about it is, you know, mosquitoes don't stop at town borders. It's, uh, so, uh, you know, that's what we're hoping to see. We're hoping we'll see help for, you know, some of the smaller communities. You mentioned that you did education and advocacy. Is that the advocacy role that you're speaking of now or that you're part of the Mosquito for 21st Century or is there additional advocacy that you do? Um, that's probably been the big one these last couple of years, you know, with the task force being um, set up. But we do the same thing, you know, we talk to the state stakeholders about what kind of the troubles are with mosquito control. That's kind of the biggest advocacy uh, factor we talk about is advocating for these small towns. You know, we have the town of Heath, which has 800 people in it, that had a triple E. Uh, they were critical for triple E risk in 2019 and they're a town of 800 people, but they can't afford to join the district. So that's a great prime example of the, you know, advocating because, you know, we, we try to kind of convey to the state that, hey, that um, this law is a little uh, lopsided in favor of, you know, bigger towns and cities. So, I, you know, I believe that's why um, there hasn't been a district in the Pioneer Valley until, you know, a couple of years ago. So we work hard to secure grants and stuff so we can help, you know, provide access to the smaller communities as well as just the district or just the Pioneer Valley in general. So we've been fortunate. We've been, we've gotten some good grants. Um, you know, we got grant for mosquito control equipment that we're excited to use. You know, we have the equipment that's going to be used when the facility's gotten, we got a grant for the facility. So it's been good. You know, it's, it's been a bit of a, I, I hesitate to say a slow burn. It's been faster than expected, but still, it's still a little slow. But we've really wanted to ramp up because of what's happened these past few years, um, you know, with these outbreaks. Michelle? Um, do you have a mechanism for um, getting input from the public and from the um, member towns, um, like a regular? Um, we have our commission meetings, which are posted publicly, you know, anyone's able to join those and we're happy to, you know, talk about the function of the district. But besides that, um, my email and number are posted publicly on the Pioneer Valley webpage. So, you know, anyone that's interested is uh, totally welcome to reach out to me for, you know, any questions or, you know, re you know, from comments just about district. And Michelle, I listened in on and I'll share that information it kind of came up quickly. Um, the mosquito control for the 21st century, which was an outgrowth of, a, well, anyway, I won't give you the history, but there's a local engagement committee, and I actually listened in on their last meeting, um, easy to get on to listen, you can't discuss during the meeting, but they are very open to public comment, and there's a lot of public comment out of there, and it's, it's the group that uh, Chris is talking about, they're, they're charged with looking at the current, what's available in the future. Um, one of the things at the meeting this week I listened to, which was a little disconcerting, was they're doing a lot of planning and they're only making recommendations to the legislature. And there was somebody from the state, and I, I couldn't keep track of all the players, but it sounds like things are going to move really slow, like the next year, two years. Um, there's not a lot of urgency. There's a lot of bureaucracy in this, I might say. So there's a lot going on that we can pay attention to, but I'm not... It's not gonna help us right now, but there's a lot to pay attention to going forward. So I can share that information with you after. I would love to hear that. I did catch the end of that meeting. I couldn't go oh. at the beginning and it was long. I think it went till two o'clock or so. Yeah. Um, and I didn't know if meeting this coming um, Tuesday is going to be the same group or a different group. Um, the local but there is another meeting the same coming up. I'm sorry. Sergeant okay, Drops. the Thank same you. group. Well, um, other questions for Chris? Yeah, I think I touched upon everything I wanted to mention, but you know, if you have any more questions, you know. And so we can follow up with questions over email to you, Chris? Sure, for sure. 
Yes, I got that presentation you forwarded, Tony Lynn. Thank you. Thanks, Jane. Chris, it looks really good. I think showing that with people is a is an interesting um, way for education. Thank you. Okay. Chris, by the way, Jane Evan Smith is our select board liaison. So she's oh, great. Yeah. Okay. This has been really helpful, Chris. Yeah, sure. thanks for your time, Chris, and thank you, Mary. Anytime. In such with such short notice, just like yeah. I think last month. Yeah, for and, sure. Um, I suspect we will when we put our plan together. Um, have you take a look at it, see what you think. Um, Absolutely. So yeah, um, you know my email is Christopher Craig at MassGov. If anybody has any more questions that come up after, um, feel free to shoot me an email. And uh, if you want to talk on the phone, I'll give you my number. Um, but yeah, I'm happy to look at your application if you decide you want to apply to opt out. Um, well, our town has already decided that. And so now oh, we are just in out. charge okay. of, of going through the application. Sure. Yeah, I'll be happy to look at it and tell you, you know, probably what the state will think. You know, they're pretty, uh, they don't go out and say exactly, they don't give you an exact criteria about what's mm -hmm. going to be the yes or no. But, you know, it is a little kind of inferring, oh, they're going to think this. So, you know, based you, on 2021, I think we'll have a good idea of what will be approved. Um, I don't, I haven't seen, I don't know if the opt-out has come out for 2022 yet. I don't believe it has. I'd imagine mm -hmm. it'll look the same, maybe slightly different, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, I'll be happy to look at it. And, you know, I, I understand opting out at the end of the day, the risk of an aerial spray is very low. Um, you know, it, it could be like a gamble because you don't want to not do it if you really, it isn't for you. But, you know, there hasn't been an aerial spray, I don't think, to my knowledge, at least in the past 15, 20 years that has been in Hadley or in the Hadley area. I know in 2019, there was an aerial spray that clipped Hampshire and Hampton counties, but I don't think it got to Hadley. That was the closest it's been. But that was really, uh, that was a doozy of a triple E outbreak. So, but yeah, we're um, gonna be happy to look at it. Just sorry, quick clarification. So do we, I should, I should know this, do we have to opt out every year? So the opt out process is new and yeah, I believe mm -hmm. in every year thing because you know, the 2021 one expired and it just seems it's gonna be every year. Cause I think every year they're gonna look at what happened the previous summer right. and then decide, you know, what's it gonna look like. So that's what I would expect. Okay, and then do you remember when the 20 or maybe Bobby, no, you know, when the 2021 guidance came out? It came out quick. It was last minute. It was like March or for, for May deadline, March or April is very late. I'm going to try yeah. to follow up and see if they've made any decisions yet. Uh, yeah, I think it's going to be hurry up, hurry up and wait again, but we'll, we'll see. We'll yeah, I hope they see. get it out earlier this year. All right. Hmm. Thanks so much, Chris. Sure. Thanks for having me, and you all know, have a nice night. Uh, great. We'll be in touch. Awesome. Take care. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. So next on our agenda is old business, and I think it relates to what we just heard because there's two points: the outreach and the strategic plan updates. Um, so uh, outreach, I believe, was related to the letter that Shaw put together. Um, I was wondering, my understanding was that letter was put together under us thinking that we, at the beginning of the meeting when we thought there was gonna be a vote <laughs> and you know, the beginning of the, our in-person meeting, the first half we thought there'd be a vote and then we all realized, no, there's no vote. Um, so uh, I guess I'm feeling um, less motivated right now to try to like do pre-work on letting people know what's happening when we're just, it's very early, it's very standard across all these different towns in the Valley. And I feel like um, it's not gonna be very controversial, especially if there is, uh, it sounds like we are, will have the option to do aerial spraying in the future um, with this, uh, with be, give because of our mosquito control district partner. So it's not like, we're actually doing anything drastically different. We're just saying like, we want the autonomy to say whether we're gonna do this. And, and it's hard to imagine, especially since we already voted on that. It's hard to imagine that we 
why we need to like get people all um, sensitized to it. But maybe I'm just mis um, misunderstanding our objective. I my thought on that is I, I'm 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 in the same direction. However, I'm wondering whether the tone would be more, and maybe this is beyond what we need to do. Would be, can you share with us what you're currently doing for integrated pest management? And some people are going to say, what the heck is that? Some people are going to give us good information. I mean, I I don't know. I I don't know if it would be helpful in, in terms of us develop the plan. I. I don't want to represent Shell, but I know he was really concerned that oftentimes there's not buy-in from farmers because they don't feel that they had an opportunity for input. Right, which I understand, but because we're already past that point, like I could see that that could be for before the vote. Um, and when I did at tell Shell that, I think he didn't realize there was no vote. There was a little confusion because mm -hmm. I remember he came in late to that meeting. And so I okay. think there was a little bit I'm not trying to say he doesn't want to send the letter, but I just, um, yeah, go ahead, Michelle. I'm just wondering what, whether it would make sense to ask to appear with the, um, at the Agricultural Commission or for them to send a rep or reps to one of our meetings just to talk See, I'm about I'm just worried issues. that we're just opening a door as if right. people have a say in anything. And like, yeah. there's no, con there's nothing to, like, what are we trying to discuss? Right. You know, and so if we make it seem like there's things that people could have opinions on, then we have to have things that they have to have opinions on. And um, if our if we're simply going to put together a document that has like two paragraphs from us that essentially says the Pioneer Valley Mosquito Repellent Drill District will continue to do for surveillance, and then we will be able to get options from them in the future. We're mm -hmm. a low risk district. Then it feels like we're like asking people for things that. And, and Bobby, to your idea of like, if we get two farmers to respond, here's the things they do, is that, you know, so then we put in the plan and say two of our farmers do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it speaks to the larger, larger issue of we had talked about some, and I'm not sure what the purpose would be of that either, a public meeting, and I'm not, you know, for input, but I don't know that we have yeah, That's again, I felt like either. that was from when we thought there was going to be this vote or we I under mis misunderstood the application or something. Um, so I'm I, not sure. I don't remember if some kind of public meeting is just a requirement of the whole thing, whether or not there's going to be a vote. And if I'm remembering that, that, I thought we saw something on the application about it that, and then we reread it. I thought that was what we... The public I remember we... The, go ahead, Bobby. Go ahead. I, well, the public meeting was the town meeting where we decided right. to do the opt-out. That was the yeah. public meeting requirement. So I don't know that in terms of developing the plan, we have a requirement to do so. I don't think so, but. Right, because we originally started to put that in the strategic plan and then we realized, no, we already did that. I right. think. And so then we like took it back out again. Mm -hmm. So do you think mm -hmm. once we have developed a plan, it makes sense to have a public meeting for input about the plan? Well, I don't know. I mean, what would we gain? I, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't mean to yeah. say people wouldn't be able to have add anything, but I know the, the only requirement I, I understand that we have, and I requirement versus good idea, requirement is that Jane suggested when she told us we didn't have to do um, the town meeting, is that as a courtesy, we need to present the plan to the select board. And it's not if they approve it mm -hmm. or not, but it's a courtesy to say, this is what we're submitting. Mm -hmm. Is that correct, Jane? Yes, I think that is the correct move. Uh, it is a courtesy. They have told you that your job is to make a mosquito opt out plan. Okay. Okay, that's great. So what I'm seeing in the the strategic plan, which we fortunately haven't approved yet, <laughs> is that we would probably want to pull out the line that is like the. Um, so if we start from the bottom, we've got review opt-out plans from surrounding towns. It says by end of January, if we still think that we can do that, uh, Bobby, I know we're waiting to hear back from people. So it's sort of like <laughs> contingent on whether people, so maybe we say by February, just because it's not our fault. So, mm -hmm. um, 
So maybe that gets adjusted to by February. And then um, the next one is monitor state application updates ongoing. Good. Um, we, we then have meet with Joe Comerford and Dan Carey. Um, we can keep that on there. I don't really know what we need to ask them, but, but I know we were saying, well, we're gonna, they're gonna be at the senior center anyway, so we can talk to them. But it sounds like this is just pretty like, like lots of towns are doing this. And you know, if you're in a Tripoli place that has had Tripoli, you're gonna have a problem. And if you haven't, you won't. Um, so I don't know if we wanna keep that point in. The next one is. Um, can you wait a second? I want to see if I can get it. I want to get my copy of it so I can. No yeah, I'm it's sorry. probably easier, right? Sorry. I wish okay, I could share I my screen. Me. Okay. Okay. So I'm just going um, from the bottom. From the bottom. Okay. So we roll up plans. We said by end of February or by mid February, maybe. Let's. I think it. just say February. February. By February. Okay. Okay. And then meet with Joe. Um, what, one thing I think would be helpful and I will do it is I want to follow up with their office and see what's happening with the 2022 plan opt-out plan if anything's going on when it might be available yeah so maybe I, that I wording is fine I mean. with Joe if that's useful yeah but we we said we would do the March Friday with friends at the senior center um I just didn't know if that is I'm not really sure what we would ask her but Bobby you just mentioned or I could invite her and she would sign into one of your Zoom meetings. Yeah, I, I just don't know if, I mean, I don't have a question that feels like I should take up her time. You know, like, what are we going to ask her? Like, we don't have a problem that... <laughs> what is the state's position? On what, what she can tell you is if you're having questions about what's going on, how can you get involved with the state and which part of the state you want to talk to? So, the pioneer planning mosquito control is not who we need, then she will know who it is and how to get hold of them. What do you think, Bobby? I, I think we need to be more, fo I think we need to focus on what we would talk to her about. We can develop that perhaps some ideas outside of our meeting and then address it at the next meeting and then figure out how we bring her into this. Um, but I don't want to just have an open, she's very involved. She's very interested in this issue, but I, I, as you say, we don't want to waste her time. We want to be very focused on what we want to talk to her about. So let's, let's maybe work on that offline in terms of, and then we'll, we'll get it on. And by offline, the you don't mean actually us having a conversation as no, a I don't, that's I really just mean that. <laughs> let's put our ideas together and at the next meeting, decide on what we're going to discuss with her. Okay, that's good. So that'll be an agenda item for next meeting. My question mm -hmm. is, can we remove that line as our strategic plan? I feel like if it's in there, then we have to do it, but maybe that's right, the me meet, being to... Yeah, the yeah. meet with Joe meeting yeah, thing? Yeah, Joe and Dan, okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Like if we end up doing it, great. I just don't want to be held to it because we said we would. Got it. Okay. Um, and then similar, the, the line above that. Which similar line? Sorry, engage the town. That one's oh, um, right, right. Um, yeah, I'm gonna find that. Engage the town. Da, da, da. I'll find it. Engage town. Oh, okay. Public education. Where is that? I'm sorry. Is there a it's date the to that? Fourth line from the bottom on the strategic plan. Conduct public hearing. That one. You hearing? Yeah. By mid March. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no. Okay. Do we have a different version? Maybe I have a different version than you do. I'm looking at the electronic version. Um, yeah, me too. Strategic plan 12, 28, 21. Oh, sorry. Have... Got it. Yeah, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Okay. So I'm just wondering, I, I, what I'm hearing is that that isn't necessary. We are going to go to the select board in April or whenever it is that we really like, have the draft ready to go, but that we don't need to conduct public hearings because this isn't a, that sophisticated or complicated and there aren't a bunch of different options. We're gonna give like a fairly simple, straightforward. Okay, but so the engage I, I the could town. be wrong, I'm not, this is a, you know, this is a conversation. No, no. But the engage the town is what we're taking out, right? That's my suggestion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay, meet with Joe Comerford and Dan Carey. We'll go to the March Friday meeting, but then we will we'll decide if we need a 
direct meeting with her. Okay. Right. So we could just take that out and then do it, you know, okay. but not have it in our strategic mm -hmm. plan. Got it. Okay. Um, um, okay. So then the other thing I'm wondering is the board of health. You know, I, I sent an email to, I've been sharing, um, copying Sue and Susan, and she has written back to me, we support what you do, but she hasn't had any, she doesn't have anything to add. And I, I just, I'm a little concerned about that because most towns do this through the board of health. Um, I, I just don't know how to engage her. Um, do you have any ideas, Jane, or anyone else? Oh, Michelle? I, I had an idea because I was thinking when we were talking and, um, about doing the courtesy presentation to the select board that inviting the board of health to that would also be a good thing to do. I think when we have our plan. I think when you have a plan, you explain it to the Board of Health and you get their blessings. And they're That's certainly right. going to support it. And then okay. you can say the Board of Health is behind us on this, but they don't have either the the um, power or the money to you know initiate anything. Nor can they enforce anything. That's another issue that's going on right now with Board of Health. Yes, I remember hearing about that. <laughs> um, yeah, I like that because I guess I'm just coming back to this idea of like, these are busy, important people. We're busy people. Like, I don't want to go to them and say, so we're doing this thing. We're not sure why we're here. They're not sure why we're here. Than you, Tony Lynn. <laughs> okay, well, then I'm also busy and important and I don't want to. So, okay, well, then can we? Um, move that then to this like row two, Bobby, where mm -hmm. we, you know, or add a row below it, but it's essentially the same idea, like review application slash plan with BOH as mm -hmm. like, row three, you know, but it's basically the same before, as row two. Same. Okay. That would be before we submit it, uh, before we present. It'd be like in April. Board. Yeah. Yeah. A, yeah. Okay. Okay. April. Okay. Um, Okay, I, I, I may digress for a minute here. I, it, well, no, we'll wait for new business. Keep going. Well, before you digress, I just want to get through the rest of the strategic yeah, plan yeah, because yeah, yeah, I'm also you. seeing, so again, moving from the bottom, the next line, complete application items. Um, good. Uh, we said by end of January, but now realizing the, uh, the application is even out yet. So mm -hmm. we can't we're not gonna even have the application to complete. So we shouldn't hold ourselves to that timeline. Um, so maybe like by early April. Okay. Um, actually, the some of this we can start filling in, I think on the application based on right. what we've gotten from Chris. So sure. instead of complete, should, should we this say- this is where begin? we sit. Complete application plan by end of March, I guess. Complete alternative mosquito plan. Yeah, I guess I'm not sure what the difference between row four and row five are. Oh, um, okay. But I mean, I think we can stay by early April and be working at it along the way, right? We don't have to okay, wait. Instead of by, wait. Okay, instead of by. Okay, and which line do, by early April, which one is that in reference to? I guess complete application items. Okay. Okay, uh, yeah, we'll have to get on a select board meeting. Yeah, early April. I think we need to get on a select board meeting early in May because the application may be due by the end of May. I don't think we can send it in before the select board. So we've okay. got um, April select board meeting on the, on the strategic plan. That should okay. be great. And so the board of health, we should have perhaps earlier or April also. Good point, we'll, yeah. We'll coordinate, we'll coordinate those dates. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then it says by end of March on the complete application plan. Um, and maybe that should just be by end of April because it'll be like, that should probably, I don't know. Or that's by beginning of April. I don't know if that's the same. I'm not really clear whether that's different than the next line of create alternative. Yeah, I'm, I'm mosquito thinking mosquito that create all, yeah, the complete application and plan create alternative mosquito management plan. To me, that's the same thing. Me too. Yeah. yeah. So I think you could just get Are rid you of okay one with of those. that? Okay. So we're just moving. Okay. That's okay. All right. 
So I I'm thinking so a complete application plan, and then we have the website. I'm putting create alternative mosquito plan, and I think the complete application items goes away and everything else gets moved up. Does that make sense? It does. And I guess the last thing on here is that you have Bobby will contact PVMCD. That should probably be its own row, like meet with and coordinate. Yeah. So meet with and coordinate plan with PVMCD that I'll, that maybe that like, like what we did tonight could be its own part of our strategic plan, right? That was a big deal. Right. So if you wanted to add a row that says like, meet with them, which we already did, but <laughs> you know, okay. like we get credit for okay. it. Um, if you want to get credit for attending the meeting you went to um, last week, you could put that in too. <laughs> there you go. Let's just... I mean, come on, we're busy. We should get credit for everything we're doing. I just have more time on my hands than you guys do. I don't mind. I'm, I'm kind of obsessed with this. I'm sorry if I'm <laughs> stepping in too much here. No, no, but, but, you're, but you also gathered information. You, you, you understand how You're this in the right role to be obsessed with this. You're our chair. This is great. <laughs> Okay. Um, okay. Good. All right. So, Bobby, you'll send that out around again now that we got it all edited up and we can. I think I have it. I think it. I have it. Some of these dates I'm a little confused on, but we'll send it out and you can send the edits. Okay. Um, okay. Right. And we'll. Uh, all right. Sounds like our decision for now is to table the letter from Shell. Mm hmm. I move that we table the letter from Shell. I second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Bobby, you want to vote? Aye. Any abstaining? Any no's? Okay. <laughs> Unanimous. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, let's, before we do future meeting dates, other business, Bobby. Okay. So I, I'm psyched. Um, so did you listen to the, the local engagement? meeting Michelle or the larger 21st century? I think it was the task force. It was the one on, um, was it Thursday? Um, okay. And I came, or let, let's see what day did I write it down? My, hold on. I listened on Thursday and I came really late to it. Um, so I really just caught the end and, and actually left before the bitter end because I, I just haven't caught That's enough okay. of it. Okay. Um, okay. Oh, the one I attended was the local engagement, which was more specific, I think, than the bigger task force. And I will continue to monitor that, but it was fascinating. Um, they're, they're charged with looking at more specifically what happens at the local level. And they ha I can send this out to you. There, there were 10 different steps that they're working on. Um, the, what I, the bottom line, what I got out of it is, I believe on February 10th, and that's a date that might be helpful, they're bringing recommendations to the overall committee because there's a lot of subcommittees. The local engagement committee, just to give you an idea, um, they're working on, they're, they're kind of focused on the more personal property opt out. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Instead of the aerial spraying, yeah. it's people can mark plots, et cetera. Um, they're look, talking about evaluation of non target impacts. They call it public engagement, but they haven't defined engagement. Um, increasing sharing of in information, but they don't. They're just making recommendations and not making plans. And this is why it's going to be really slow because they're making, making recommendations to the state. And then the person from the state who was on there said, well, you know, this is going to take time and money and blah, 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 blah. So it, it's, it's informative, but I'm not sure it's going to be, it, it's an ongoing thing. Um, they are going to have a meeting on February 10th where they're actually putting their recommendations forward. Um, and consideration down the road. Uh, so that may, I can give you more information on that, but um, they're gonna to wanna to provide comprehensive evaluation of each session, each session's mosquito control process. So they're more process oriented than they are information oriented at this point, trying to streamline the, the what's going on. Um, I see them not offering information out, but gathering information in. There is on their website 
an opportunity, ongoing opportunity for public comments. But to make public comments, you really kind of have to follow all that they're doing. I'm not making much sense here. The most interesting thing I found out, and I will continue to, to monitor the, opt, the Oak Engagement Committee. Beyond that, I actually have gone on to NOFA's website, um, which has amazing information in terms of uh, mitigation and how to do things without pesticides and public education. And that I think would, could be really helpful if we go to some of that. There's a whole link to a plan uh, called Beyond Pesticides that talks about um, mitigation and prevention and that really being the way to get control of mosquitoes, not to spray them because they're saying mosquito spraying, by the time you find a positive case, you're three weeks too late. I mean, it's, it's, it's very proactive as opposed to solve the problem by preventing it rather than solve the problem with chemicals, which I think would be helpful. Um, they did refer to, and a lot of the edu education, I went on the Department of Health in Massachusetts. Um, in terms of their outreach, they have some brochures and such, and I'm gonna order them just to see what they are. You can get up to hundred copies at a time, but I list, they have a video that they said you could put on your cable TV station but one of the things I was concerned about is that it speaks about using spraying yourself um, with DEET and other things. I mean, it's recommending those things. I, I'm not sure we want to be promoting that. Um, but it, it's there are resources out there that we can look at for education. One of the, one of the things that uh, this Beyond Pesticides referred to was actually in Colorado, they were they were doing a neighborhood cleanup day. And what they were doing is neighborhood by neighborhood, they were encouraging people to, you know, check their check their, you know, kitty pools and make sure the screens were good and you know get rid of standing water and kind of like public outreach that way, which that could be kind of something fun we could recommend. I don't know if it would happen. We have a cleanup day, we could have a mosquito prevention day. But my other meeting I'm back and forth with. Oops. Okay. So anyway, I've just no, I think Jane look. wants to um, get off a mute. I'm with the Climate Change Committee, who is planning their town cleanup day for um, April 9th. And then there will be an event which will include the Mother's Day collection of things. And there's also going to be a an educational component of it. And I think that if you folks wanted to have a table there, it would be really useful. Yeah. That was a Jane. Did they change your cleanup day from the 16th? Yes, which I have in my book. Okay, um, what is the actual date? The date of cleanup of the town is the 9th, and the date of the event with Mother's Day and this other event they're still working on right now is the 23rd. Yeah. Okay, the only, the only thing about cleanup for mosquitoes is that you need to do cleanup in the summertime. I mean, we could have, have information, but we could have handouts. Um, okay. I think yeah. And clean up, get rid of your tires. Don't leave kiddie pools sitting around. Look at look at places that water collect, things that are critical. Yeah. And education, that's the whole part of this um, second part of the day on Saturday, the 23rd, is educational. One thing I meant to bring up that looking at the site, um, you know, for the, what, what's it called again, which is the mosquito control for the 21st century, if all sorts of seminars, I don't know after you've gone whether I should go to the one on Tuesday because I have to rearrange things, but they have a bunch of meetings on best practices. And I don't know if that's going to include a lot of mitigation. And I don't know if there's one on January 19th that's happening that's soon um oh, go yes. for it. i mean anything we can glean would be great as far as i'm concerned I, I i couldn't make that meeting so this is the general task force right not the um, committee not it, the it's subcommittee. subcommittee meetings subcommittee so the um, okay. local engagement was one subcommittee and best practices is another um oh that'd be good okay and i'm just seeing if i can make that when i'm just flipping through my book yeah, no, I appreciate this a lot, Bobby, because I was definitely a bit um, 
concerned that there are just towns that are just doing the, the larvicide or the other kinds of chemicals just wrote like every year and it'd be great to not start out there. <laughs> it'd be great to start out with mitigation and um, better practices and cleaning out our drains and other things that have other benefits as well. Yeah. Okay. So are we, are we thinking that perhaps on April, is it April 23rd, the educational component for, we're going to, well, we would plan to do something on that date for the town? Uh, that's a suggestion. Oh, sure. I think, can we think about it for a little bit before we? Yeah, sure. Yeah, we could, yeah. If we don't want to be the people at the table because of other commitments, and I'm with Lake Warner, we might try to do something, you know, at, at the same day, we could at least gather materials to distribute. The materials we mentioned that we have, um, you know, that Chris mentioned we could have. Yeah, so of. we could ask Chris, like, hey, yeah. if we got you a table, could you give us some materials or even stand there for a couple hours? I'm not. Well, okay, I, I think that's a great idea. I'm concerned about, and, and maybe I'm overly protective here about having Chris because he talks spring yeah. and lavicide and I yeah. don't think we want people going there. Good point. I mean, <laughs> yeah. No, well I'm, said. I'm, I'm, I'm larvicide, I mean, I, I have been talking with one of my friends on the climate committee and um, the larvicide is far preferable to the spring. Apparently, I agree. And I think I, yeah, yes. Um, but we don't want to start there and also we don't want to yeah. start there yeah no. um, i think we're all in agreement there that's great so let's yeah good point okay let's just have that be another agenda item for our next meeting is talking about april 23rd um we can have the wheels spit turn about what we might do okay, and i'll i'll get i'll i'll reach out i'll get see if i can get publications the department of health um, I, Chris said he would too, but I'm wondering if it's the same material. I'm not sure. Um, we'll, we'll see. I want me to reach out to him too, see what materials he might have. If you don't or is mind. he going to get a print? I'm sorry, I interrupted. Yeah, that'd be great if you don't mind. Okay, no, no, no. And um, maybe when you do, maybe ask him about that Northampton plan. Maybe they're more likely to answer him than us or something. You know what? She's actually on, the, she's one of the commissioners, Michelle O'Leary, the Department of Health mm -hmm. person. Is one of the commissions for the Pioneer Valley Mosquito Control District. Oh, I didn't know um, that. I when I saw so, yeah. her name, I thought I wonder if it's the same one. And it is. So again, I, I contacted her right in the middle of when they were getting like a hundred all that COVID, you know, testing yeah, stuff. So sure. I'm sure she's buried. She's buried in COVID. But I will mm -hmm. still continue to get that and try to get the list from other towns. Okay. Uh, okay, other business? So revisiting our strategic plan, um, it seems to me we could wait a few weeks to meet and then it might just be a short meeting to say, we you know we're still kind of waiting. Maybe what we could do at that meeting is um, if we could get Bobby the um, a if you could pass us the 2021 application that you have in your hand there, um, in like Word doc sure, or whatever I'll it is, it. I can resend and it. It's actually online if you want it. I mean, it's, it's online if you want to get it directly from them. The 2021. Yeah, if you could send us the link, that's fine. Yeah. Either whatever. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then yeah. maybe that's something that we could spend a half hour just kind of like given what he's to start to put some words on paper when it's still kind of fresh from what Chris said. Sounds good. And perhaps we can also um, uh, start planning, figuring out the education piece for if we're going to be part of Earth Day. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Agreed. Okay. And. Should we try to set a meeting date? <laughs> yeah, I was thinking, I mean, can we do the 27th, which is just two weeks from today? Oh That'd yeah, Jane, you have me. to be here too. 
Is it harder or easier, Jane, for it to happen at the same time as the climate meeting? <laughs> I would prefer them to be a different time so I could have <laughs> full attention. Okay. How I can't imagine why. Meet? How often do they meet, Jane? Once a month. Okay. But okay, now they're so, going to have to meet earlier because they've got stuff going on. Well, how is January 27th for everyone? January 27th at 7 o'clock. At what time? Well, good. Well, that's seven o'clock. So basically, you, now and is there any weeks. chance you could meet at six or six thirty and just offset it a little? Um, I could do six thirty better than six, um, and that might change. But I have a online commitment from five fifteen to six fifteen. It's kind of hard for me because I got to drop my son at basketball. But um, J Jane, do, is there a climate meeting? You said once a month. So are they actually meeting then or not? I don't know. You don't know because they might for say the 27th. They... they're about to deal with that. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. And that's okay for you, Bobby. It's good for me, the 27th. If yeah. So it looks like right. it would be if Jane can attend, it would be at 7 p.m. So yeah, we'll at? try that. And if it turns out the climate meeting's on, we can reschedule so she doesn't have to feel crazy. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So in the meantime, I'm gonna send out the uh, updated plan. I think I'm going to send out the application and I'm going to send you some links of uh, information I've found out from some of the other, uh, like the Beyond Pesticides and everything as reference material that might be helpful. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's awesome. I have a, a quick question um, when we post the minutes mm -hmm. for this meeting. Um, what, a, what about? Uh, posting that PDF of the slides that Chris shared. He said we could share it. Uh, he told me I could share it and I've already sent it to somebody. So great. Um, and Jane, okay. you said that'd be good to share. So I think that makes sense. Okay. So in terms of posting meetings, um, <laughs> again, I said that I would meet with, with um, Jennifer okay. to set up, we have to set up a website and she would show me how to do that. Um, so we, we get to do all the posting. So right. we and you get we to post. put anything on it you want, which is good. Okay. You don't have to post your minutes until after they've been approved at the next meeting. Okay. Okay. So next meeting, we will try to approve last times and this times. Okay. okay. Um, and then get them posted. Okay. Okay. And Tony, I'll be in touch with you about formatting yeah. the minutes again no and sending them out with the old... Um, strategic plan and not the new one so we can you know have a record okay yeah i mean i don't think we have to do the old strategic plan we uh well well it's it's what we originally had so somebody following it might want to see the changes from meeting to meeting that's a lot of extra work yeah no, i would worry about it because we didn't one. Most we time. never posted it originally. We just are like yeah. saying we're gonna have a strategic plan. It was draft until now. Now we've got one. So I have one more. It, it wasn't uh, one more attached to the minutes, Jane, which was my fault. Um, I have one more suggestion or something to consider. Um, when I was looking at some stuff about you know how to get the best plans going, and we I may be getting in beyond we need to, but they talked about involving not as outreach, but in terms of. I guess input or, or, or interest, if the UMass, and I, I know Chris said that he interns, um, I'm wondering if he, and he has to go through a whole process because he's part of the state. We're not official at we town, but we don't, I don't know what guidelines we have in terms of intern, but I'm wondering if we could engage any UMass students, if we can make the connection to help us with this either that or professors or even business people. I mean, there's where we're kind of, I've, I'm feeling that we're, we're having to do a lot of catch up because we're not the experts. Um, if there's expertise out there that we could be using beyond us, um, whether we should be trying to engage other people at this point, or should we just kind of stick with what we know right now? So I'm faculty in environmental conservation at UMass and could easily ask for whoever the person would be that we would lean on. I guess it's 
the answer again, I come back to sort of I'm not really sure what the question or the problem is, mm -hmm. you know. Um, if we had to give some super detailed plan about like, and we we're gonna try to do a little like a hard sell on these mitigation instead of larvicide. Um, but it seems like for the plan we might be able to be kind of vague. Um, if there's a reason not to be vague, um, fine. I also see that this year is gonna be actually what I've learned tonight is that this year is gonna be different than next year and that next year, yeah. the mosquito control district will have all these options. And this year was just kind of like a bridging year. So it's not like, I don't think we'll benefit for long for having some like super intricate, awesome plan because it's gonna kind of get thrown out the window in 2023 when we just say like, okay, now we're gonna lean on the district. We'll still have to make decisions within our town, but, um, but I don't know. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. I'm with you on trying to try it, like you know, hold off on the chemical. No. Would you? You had a perfect word this year. is a wet year. It was great, year, and I missed that word. Is like what you Bridging. call it? Bridge. Oh, I love that. Okay. Bridge. <laughs> Bridge. Yeah. Okay. And and I know I'm I'm getting ahead of myself again, but in 2023, if 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 indeed they have something available. In the fall, that's going to be too late to get any funding from the town, isn't it? To do if we wanted to buy into more, I mean, the five thousand dollars sounds like a baseline, but it's going to be a menu option. Well, that's interesting. So one of the things that hasn't come up is that by opting out of aerial spraying by the state, are we saying that we have to pay for aerial spraying if we? go, you know, end up deciding to need it or alarm side, you know, like was the thing we're opting out of a big piece of it was that the state was going to pay and now the town has to pay. Good question. Yeah, it should have probably come up sooner. <laughs> I sense was from earlier conversations that the Pioneer Valley group that the town belonged to was going to oversee that and it wasn't going to be an individual town cost but the town has to join them for some fee yeah so no what we learned tonight is that we pay five thousand dollars for surveillance but after that it's a la carte and we have it to pay for be. what we want it will be a la carte um, starting in 2023 when they offer those services it's cheaper than a contractor because they're nonprofit, um but it's we have to pay for it but so we are guess, continue yeah. to follow that. So that's a question maybe for Chris. Um, Bobby, since you're emailing him anyway, is to say, okay, just to be clear, by opting out, are we opting into paying for stuff? Mm -hmm. Seems like the are we opting is. into what? Paying for things ourselves versus. I mean, even not to continue the conversation too much, but okay, let's say we didn't opt out of aerial spraying. As Chris said, they don't aerial spray very often, right? We all know it's a very low probability that the spray would actually happen. But what if they thought, the, they, the state, thought there was a problem, but it, would they consider, but it was like a still a kind of a small problem. Would the state, if we were still in the aerial spraying plan, would the state come and do the larvicide or does the state and pay for it, you know, or does the state only do the like big thing? And if, and if the answer is, yeah, they would have done the larvicide, did we just like stupidly say, oh, well, we'll pay for something at ourselves. Then. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Michelle. I, I think this might be a, a good question for Jill Comerford because she, um, you know, she, she knows what the state is doing, maybe more than even Chris knows, because he's got a small, you, you should ask him too, but, yeah. um, and she's been very supportive of us. On there this. you go. We found something to ask her. <laughs> we knew he would. Yeah. If, yeah. Opting out. Are we opting out of Laverside too? We don't know. Yeah. Right. And are we opting into having to pay a lot of money if the state determines we must spray? Um, like maybe the state would have made us pay for it before uh, we don't even you know so i kind of got the gist of it we need to find out where the funding comes from for spraying if the town is responsible for a lava side or whatever okay yeah 
currently in the future and in the future. Right. And so Chris will say, yeah, the town has to pay for it. But I think then it's like, okay, but what would have happened if we didn't opt out and there was a problem that wasn't huge with the state of pay for all of it? Yeah, this is right. good. I'm glad Just to have that background. Yeah. Yeah. Because we don't want in a year uh, uh, the town to be cursing us because all of a sudden there's a hundred thousand dollar cost or something. And we were like, sorry, we didn't ask the right question. <laughs> it, it's also good to know this before we go before the select board. Yeah. Okay. She right. nods. <laughs> um, Sell your case better if it costs nothing. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't think that's going to be an option. But yeah, <laughs> if it doesn't cost anything more. <laughs> um, I, oh, also, Jane, let me ask you: How do we find out if the town is is current on the five thousand? If we're current, if we're members in good standing right now with the Pioneer Valley, it says that we're a member, and the fee is five thousand dollars a year. But where does that money come from and who is it in the budget and who, who actually pays that? Um, Linda Sanderson is the person to ask since she writes the checks. Should I, should we reach out to her? Yeah, oh, call her, Kelly, you're on this committee and wanted to know if the dues have been paid for this year. Okay. Just assuming they were, but just checking. <laughs> yeah, for 2021, okay. Okay. No, 20, we're in fiscal 2022. 22. Now. Right, right, right. Which is a terrible way to run a life. <laughs> you know, I wonder, does the state work on calendar year or do they have a different? Well, I won't worry about that. I I'll don't just know. talk to Linda. I'll ask to Linda. Okay. 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 Any other, other business? It's a very productive meeting, mm -hmm. I think. I agree. Yeah. Um, Okay, uh, would anyone like to move to adjourn the meeting? Wait, wait. Art show tomorrow night at the Senior Center. All the beautiful photographs of Hadley, six to eight. What is it? Six the to eight. Art art opening show. for the uh, I Love Hadley photos the Cultural Council did. Oh, okay. Six to eight. Unfortunately, no refreshments will be served so people can keep their masks on. I was going to ask if they, uh, they were going to require people to vaccinate but I thought it might be too soon for you Jane um <laughs> people are coming in and saying you want to see my card and others are coming in and saying I'm not so. yeah. <laughs> um okay great good to know um okay uh someone want to move to adjourn I move to adjourn I seconded okay all in favor aye, aye. aye. Uh, I'll pose. Yeah, okay. Um, all right. Thanks very much.